G'day guys, Rob here, and today you join me for another episode of How It Was Made, and this is my custom Pagani Wara Dynastia Shiwin. Now this is the base model I'm using, it's made by GT Autos, it is die cast, and it does have opening doors and rear engine compartment. The front section is sealed. The decals I'll be using are from Scale Motorsports, and this is the black carbon fiber and the bronze carbon fiber. I've gathered a few parts for the build. These were printed by MIY Mini Models. These are the correct Dynastia uh, wheels, and I also got him to print up some end plate legs for the wings. Uh, I reused the GT Autos tires onto those rims, which worked out fine. Then I disassembled the model as always and worked out what I needed to carbon fiber. So these are the metal parts. As always, I use organizers and mark everything of what screws go where. And on this particular model, I decided to start with the interior. So the stock interior is pretty well detailed for the price point of this model, um, but it of course needs to be broken down, as you see here, to repaint all the different parts. Now the seats on this particular real car are actually in a gold leather uh, and a cream uh, remaining color for the rest of the interior. So that's what I started with here. Uh, masked up the certain carbon fiber areas and sprayed the colors. And also this is the gold seats. Now the tub actually has some carbon fiber sills, which the model did not have. So I made some templates out of Tamiya masking tape, uh, cut the decals, and then formed them in place with a little bit of solver set. I then started adding the accessories back in, the name plates, the speaker pods, uh, and reassembled the dashboard as you can see here with the gold highlight colors on the steering wheel. Uh, and these are the door trims with the terracotta color painted cream. I then applied some carbon fiber decals to the back of the seats, painted the front pa seat pattern with matte black, and then once they were dry, I refitted those back into the interior tub. So as you can see here, it's not super, super detailed like a auto art model, but the detail is pretty good. Uh, I did go back and touch up a few little areas on this um, after the photos were taken, but I'm pretty happy with the end result of how the interior looked. Now I wanted to try and find the right colored seat belt, so I used this three millimeter wide uh, ribbon material and then add the photo etch buckles and glue them into place. So that pretty much completes the interior. Now next, the Dynastia Shewin actually has a roof scoop. Uh, this is an old roof scoop from a Pico resin model from a Cinque uh, coupe. I heat resin parts up with a heat gun until they're soft and you can actually bend them and form them into shape without cracking the resin. Then it was time to mock up the custom rear wing. Now this is a wing blade that I got from Legend Miniatures in France many years ago. Uh, it was exactly the right curvature to match the back of the wire. So this will be cut up and sectioned to create the new wing blade for the new wing as you can see here. So that worked out pretty well that part and I'm pretty happy with that. So once it's uh, final sanded and painted and carboned, I think that will look pretty good on the model and pretty accurate to the real car. Now the roof scoop, uh, I found more photos online and realized I had the shape uh, a little bit wrong. So I did heat it up again to get a better shape over the body, added the central fin out of some styrene sheet and then used some Tamiya putty to fill up the edges which I could later sand into a point shape. I also added more to the width of the scoop as I had sanded it the wrong shape, so I just added some two-part Tamiya putty to make the scoop wider in some areas and then re-sanded it all down. And then bend the little end piece where it sits on the air box so that the engine lid closed uh, and that was pretty much the grunt work done there for this roof scoop. Now just a bit of primer on it to see how the shape looks. Uh, and a little bit more finessing and sanding will be required to just smooth this out a little bit more. Now on the underside, it, I actually wanted to cut the opening that sits over the air box and also add that little extra fin underneath which it holds it off the glass. While that was dry, drying, I moved my attention to the front of the model. 
Now to match the real car, the center section of the front lip was removed, as you can see here, and the unenviable task of sanding all the carbon fiber molded pattern off the plastic began, as I want to apply carbon decals to this and it needs to be smooth. But first I have to reconstruct the new front splitter. So I'll start with the sides, just using some 0.75 mil styrene sheet uh, for all the vertical fins and the horizontal planes. And I'll simply construct these new diffusers in sections. It's a lot easier to tackle the job that way when you break it up into pieces and it's a lot easier to get that final shape rather than making it out of one piece or one mould. Obviously times have changed now with 3D printers so if you're handy with a 3D printer um, I'm sure you could make this part from scratch. But I build all my models the old school way with uh, styrene putty and sanding and shaping. I quite enjoy it. Uh, and reasonably happy with the form so far of this front splitter. Now while I was letting that dry, I moved on to the back. So again, had to remove all the carbon fiber pattern uh, from the molded plastic on all the areas of the car. Uh, and I decided to then start to rough in the rear diffuser shapes. So I make card cardboard templates first and then transfer those shapes to the one mil styrene. Uh, heat the styrene up again with a heat gun just to get a bit of a curvature in it and then I added all the rear fins and glued those all on there. I then come back with a Dremel and started to round out the ends of those fins uh, just to get them uh, sitting into that rear diffuser by hand. Uh, they will be glued in when the model gets finally assembled uh, but this basically fits so I can go back and putty all the joins up and give them a final sand before they will be uh, painted and carbon decals applied. Next on the bill was the rear fin. Now I actually had a BBR Dynastia model and I did take a template off that rear wing uh, and also the side panels on the side sills of the wire up. Here you can see I've scalloped out the roof scoop uh, where it sits over the airbox and now I'm going through all the little details and making sure everything's sanded and uh, looking right in place uh, as I want to do all this mock-up work first uh, before the body is in carbon fibre decals as it can be a bit more fragile if you're constantly handling these parts. So I always do this, I sub-assemble and just make sure everything looks right, everything lines up. Just wanted to have a look at what the model looked like with the wheels sitting underneath the body. Uh, and now it's time to work on the body. So I stripped all the paint off with a water-based uh, paint stripper. I then applied all the grey primer to all those finish modifications. And then the time-consuming process of using masking tape to get carbon fibre templates of all the black parts you see here. The parts were primed, painted black, and then painstakingly applied all the carbon decals and applied the custom gold striping and Dynastia logos. Again, just going through working out what grain direction all these parts need to be cut at. As you can see, the markings on my masking tape. Um, everything is basically primed, painted in black, and then I can start applying all the carbon fiber decals. So gloss black works sometimes, but I find the decals stick better uh, to a matte black finish. Uh, and that's what I do here. So this is done in many pieces uh, to do either side of the fins and same as all the top sections as well. Lots of different pieces, always trying to make sure that the grain is running in the right direction. And then the gold striping and the wire decal were applied in place. Now I'm upgrading the mirrors on this model. I've actually got a set of auto art mirrors which are a better shape and more detailed so they will be replacing the factory GT Autos mirrors just to get rid of those chunky style mirrors. And I also carbon fibre decaled the rear light housings as well. The rear car has real gold lenses front and rear so they were painted gold and this is the first round of clear coating on all those black carbon fiber parts that I did. So I'm using a 2K clear and uh, I really lay on the clear to get that sort of a, a brilliant finish. Just re-clear the factory side luggage boxes as they didn't need to be carbon fiber decaled. Uh, and here's the front and rear all clear. 
clear coated as well. So as you can see, super glossy, and that's the bonus of using a 2K clear uh, on these models that I build. And there's all the little parts together, so they will be just set to the side uh, while they dry, and then I can start assembling, like gluing the mesh in, gluing the rain light in, uh, rear diffuser just, just sitting in there at this stage, um, but I could finally reassemble all those other little pieces as well. Front mesh in place, really starting to bring the nose together, and the gold fins were added in there also to match the real car. Now there's nothing in behind the front of the mesh on this particular model, so I cut some radiator uh, sections and I glued those in onto the floor plan so that you can see them through when the model is reassembled. Just saves having a little hole in there. Added some little silver bolts to the side fins and also glued the rear wing together. And I just made my custom DRLs just out of some little photo etched blocks. So as the uh, original car just had a silver decal for the daytime running lights. So just test fitted all those to have a look at a little bit of a progress picture to see the model sort of coming together with those certain components finished. Now is the time to start making templates of all the carbon fibre decals. So I start with a centre line down the body. So this will be the line that I start my template from and I'll mark out the 45 degree pattern on all the pieces, run those through so that they all match, so that when they're cut out of the sheets of decals, the grain is running in the right direction. And you can see that on the rear clamshell here as well. So many, many templates needed to be made for this body. As you can see here, the bronze carbon fiber for all the upper body and the black carbon fiber for the lower body. Next, the body was cleaned with uh, wax and grease remover. It was primed and then painted black. As you can see here, I just use a semi-gloss black. Then all the templates on the carbon fibre decals were cut out and then again painstakingly applied to the body. Now I started with all the black decals here as the bronze ones on the hood will overlap, as you can see here. Uh, these are scale motorsport decals um, and a very complex front wing on these cars and very hard to mould the carbon. Now <clears throat> I did get a few little creases um, in the decals on this application. Uh, didn't really notice some of them straight away but in the end as you'll see what's coming up uh, there was a disaster uh, and they would all be redone again. So before we get to that stage, as you can see, I slowly went through and applied them all in separate pieces as you'll never form one large decal over that whole area. So you've got to divide it up and do it into sections. Obviously a flat wedge shaped car would be a lot easy to apply all these decals, but I can say from my many years of modeling experience that the Pagani wire body is extremely difficult to uh, apply decals to. Um, as I got further through the body, uh, my skills were getting better with these decals, so um, I decided to just keep going and absolutely apply carbon decals everywhere so that when the model was fully opened up, it would be all carbon fibre instead of seeing some sections in black. So this was the outside of the body, all with carbon decals applied. I was pretty happy with my accomplishments at this stage. I then applied more carbon decals to all the inside of the door openings, the engine compartment as well, uh, and as you can see, just checking to make sure that you didn't see any raw black areas. Uh, pretty happy with how that all came out. I then applied the gold stripe on the body, which is famous on that car. There's another picture of the side sills before clearing. Uh, painted the gold strip on the front of the roof scoop as well and then in the little tray here to go out to the spray booth to clear coat the body. Now this is a huge disaster and this really, really upset me. So when I clear coated the body, I always layer the clear up in light coats, but as you can see here, all the bronze carbon fiber became very blotchy as if the color was running. Now as you can see here, no problem at all with the black carbon fiber, same clearing process at the same time, 
but all the bronze carbon fiber had this blotchiness and bleeding of color through it everywhere, which was just, it was ruined. So there was nothing really else I could do um, but put the model away for a couple of months uh, and get my head back in the game before I would decide what I was going to do with it because it took many, many hours to get all this carbon fibre on the body. So it was an absolute disaster. So I persevered and I masked up the body with the black carbon because that was okay and I used paint stripper to remove all of the clear coat, all the original decals and I took it back to metal. This was the bumper bar with a, uh, I did this as a sample, so I did just the bumper bar. I let the decals dry for a couple of weeks and then I clear coated it and everything seemed fine. That seemed to work okay. So I'm not gonna show you all the pictures here, but there's plenty of pictures where I just went through and I reapplied all the carbon fiber decals to the whole entire body again. Um, but that was a godsend in one way because I didn't get any of the creases that I got the first time around. So uh, I was really, really happy uh, the way it came out this time. All my carbon pattern matched up. Uh, and as I said, as you can see by the pictures, I definitely got a better result this time from the application of all these scale motorsport decals. So I just kept working through the body until it was all done again, as you can see here time to put a clear coat on it and it happened again so not as bad this time around I did the same thing I let all the decals dry for a couple of weeks and then I layered up the clear coat the same as my test bumper bar that I did uh, and I just could not explain why this did this again uh, the decals were adequately dried uh, I've been painting models in 2K clear for over 20 years. Um, and this really, it nearly broke me as a model builder, I have to admit. So it was stored away for a long time and I actually, uh, I didn't take any real photos of it, but I redid the body a third time. So I re-carbon fiber decal the entire body for a third time. So at this stage, I've probably spent uh, in excess of a week and a half full-time work uh, adding decals to this body and removing them. So uh, this time it worked out. I didn't get any blotchiness. Uh, I don't know why. I then added the gold pinstripes uh, to the body again. There's some sections there that you can see are flat. I just sanded out a little bit of dust in the clear coat before I applied the gold decals. And then it was time for the spray booth again and I was praying to God that I didn't have any other reaction because I couldn't do this a fourth time. Uh, but luckily for me, third time was a charm. The clear coat, I laid it in very thin layers over the bronze uh, and built those coats up throughout a couple of hours in the spray booth. And as you can see here, no bleeding of color. Uh, I did get a couple of little pin spots in there, but overall, after what I went through on this model, uh, I was so thankful that it did not react that third time uh, and it looked like I was going to be able to finish this model and actually add it into the collection rather than just giving up on it completely. So once that 2K clear had dried for a, a solid week, uh, I then started reassembling the model. So adding the mesh, headlights, front windscreen then went into the body, uh, started adding the other pieces like the windscreen wiper. Uh, these are the auto art side mirrors that I clear coated in 2K clear. Rear lights were assembled into the rear clamp. And then the front flap and flap bracket was screwed into place on the rear shell. Painted in black, hinges attached, rear wheel tubs in place and the flaps work fine back in place. I then started going through the rest of the body and adding parts like side mesh, the rear fin was then applied to the rear shell. That all came out pretty well, happy with that. And then that's the body at this stage with a couple of pictures, just seeing it with the clamshell on there that everything cleared all right. I then reassembled the doors by adding the door trims. Rear mesh was applied into the front doors. Little logos added. 
and she's really starting to come together. So I was excited at this time to keep adding parts like the rear window, then the engine assembly, which in hindsight's a little bit basic. I probably should have spent a bit more time on that, but at the end of the day, uh, more projects to do. But I was reasonably happy with that. Now the side luggage compartments were glued in as well as all the little fuel caps and reservoir containers. These are all the factory items from uh, the GT Autos model. Now I did crack the rear window as you can see there so I made a replacement one out of some uh, clear acetate sheet. That saved the day on that one and then the roof scoop was glued into the underside of the rear shell as you can see here. So when the rear shell lifts up the, rear, the air scoop comes with it just like the real car and just test fitting that rear shell in place to make sure it uh, fits in and clears everything okay everything was good at this stage then I started looking at the other parts of the sh chassis I removed the factory brake discs kept the calipers remounted all the suspension back into the body and then re-screwed on the rear clamshell. Now that doesn't stay up by itself on that particular model, but the model does come with a stay rod. Roof windows were glued in, and then the interior and the chassis were then screwed back into the body. Then started adding all the little side diffusers. Rear wing was glued on. Clearances checked and then the rear diffusers could be glued in for the final time as they hide a screw. And then with the model propped up, propped up on my workbench at the correct height, I then glued the wheels back onto the model. Custom made a display plate for the display and this is mounted on a MR Collection beige leather base and I've screwed it to the base like a usual resin model but everything can still open. Uh, and this was a very, very long journey of over one year to basically put this model together. So I'm absolutely thankful that uh, it turned out and I could add it to the collection. Uh, I'm very proud of this build and all I can say is never give up. Always be persistent. If you want to see the end result, you've just got to put the hard yards in and that's definitely what I did on this model. Uh, I've had quite a few people that offer me quite good money for this model, but uh, I just, I cannot sell it with all the pain that uh, took place during the build of this car. But as you can see, the end result here, uh, it turned out pretty, a pretty accurate replica of the real car. Is it perfect? No, it's not easy to get all of my custom models uh, completely perfect like a sealed resin model from the high-end brands like BBR or MR Collection um, but I am pretty happy with how it did turn out and it's quite an interesting looking displayed model in my collection of Pagani models so this one will stay in the collection for a long time to come so I hope you enjoyed it uh, and you saw all the highs and lows that were involved in the build of this model but until the next video, thanks for watching Rob's Model Cars.